Hey everyone, this is John Buck, back with another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk just a little bit about Z-transform properties. There's a large table of different properties in the books, but I'm just going to highlight a handful uh, that, that we use a lot are very important in the class. Uh, and this shouldn't uh, hopefully take anybody by surprise. These are very similar to the Fourier transform properties you know already. So they're not quite exactly the same, but in some mathematical sense, uh, they kind of rhyme. Uh, they're approximately the same as things you know already. We know that when we set z equal to e to the j omega, they need to be the same as the Fourier transform property. So that's always a good sanity check, since we can set z equal to e to the j omega and turn a z transform into the Fourier transform as long as the region of convergence includes the unit circle. So let's uh, switch over to the whiteboard, and I'll show you what I mean. So again, uh, for tonight, we're looking at z transform properties. Uh, again, the definition of the Z-transform is that we say X of Z is equal to the sum from minus infinity to plus infinity of X of N, Z to the minus N. Uh, and so sometimes we'll write this in shorthand with this double arrow, just like we did with the little uh, cursive FT. We have a cursive capital Z here. Uh, some people like to write it maybe more like this sort of calligraphic Z. Uh, but one way or the other, this sort of arrow notation doesn't mean, again, not that they're equal, but there's a one-to-one -one mapping between them as long as, of course, we know this has to include the ROC. So the first one uh, that we see a lot, that we'll use a lot because we use it in difference equations and such, is the delay property, that y, if y of n is the delayed version of x of n, that it turns out this is the same as multiplying by z to the minus 1 for the z transform domain. So y of z, capital, this is a capital y of z, is z to the minus 1 times capital x of z. Another good property uh, was it, maybe Z was a bad choice here. I'm going to change this on the fly just because we've got too many Z's with the Z transform. Let's call this this variable uh, uh, S. That'll be easier. So if I have S of N is equal to a sum, a, a scaled or, or scaled and summed version, uh, I still have linear properties. So S of Z is equal to A times X of Z plus B times Y of Z. Uh, and then the other one, coming back the other way, if we multiply two Z transforms, uh, what do you think happens? We multiply in one domain, we convolve in the other. Our old friend convolution, back again. And then, uh, to be complete, we should talk about regions of convergence. So in this case, the ROC of Y... equals the ROC of X, except possibly adding or subtracting the origin or infinity. Right, we're, we're putting a, uh, a another, by multiplying by Z to the minus one, we're putting another pole at the origin. Uh, so we might be removing, depending on what's already at the origin, we might be removing uh, that from the ROC. And we could, depending on, on how we do the shifting, we might also make something that wasn't causal causal and take away a pull at infinity, like we talked about in the causal video. Uh, the, when we add two things, the ROC of S has to be uh, at least as big as the intersection of the individual ROCs. to take the intersection of the two and then say it'll be at least as big. You, you can sometimes um, have what we call pull zero cancellation and have it get bigger, but it's always going to converge that everywhere, if both terms are finite, the sum will always converge where they did, where they both did. Uh, and similarly, in this case, that the ROC of Y will be you know, again, this is the sort of set notation for contains. Is, 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 uh, the region of convergence of Y is at least as big as the intersection of the regions of convergence of X and H. Okay, so those are the three properties we'll use over and over again. They're the main ones. Uh, oh, and, and one more we'll, I'll mention is the initial value theorem. It's not really a side-by-side a -side one. But the initial value theorem uh, 
what that says is if x of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0, then the limit as z goes to infinity of x of z is equal to the sequence at n equals 0, so at time 0. So again, that that's just comes directly from the definition of the sum, but it is important. Uh, this is, you know, if, if these x's become h's, I'm talking about a frequency response uh, or an impulse response and a, and a system function. And this tells me, it says if I have a causal system, the limit as z goes to infinity of the system function is the impulse response at time zero. Okay, so those are uh, just a couple highlighted z-transform properties. Uh, I'll stop here, and I'll see you at the next video.